Um, well, thanks so much to um, Uncle Ringo. That was a really good, really good welcome to country, and I wish I could stay in that space for longer. Um, I would also like to acknowledge that we're on, we're on jury land and pay my respects to elders, past, present, and emerging of the Kulin Nation. I've always found it quite curious that the most welcoming people in this country I found to be First Nations. So that says a lot about our society, I suppose. I would also like to thank Joanna and Seb for making me the first speaker, which is a crazy choice by all means. Uh, so I appreciate the trust, which I surely will break, um, but such is life. <laughs> And I would also like to point out that John Campbell is here, who was involved heavily in the first 10 years of West Space when they were back in Footscray. And we were just talking about how they had a loose committee at the start. So it's really special to see people coming back to, to West Space in this way. <coughs> now, Imagine an administrator saying words like radical, safe, or transformation out loud in the art world. Or even worse, picture these words coming out of a cis man's mouth. Wait, the man has an accent from the global south, so now you're listening. I guess it suits your very complex and sincere politics. Please be my friend. I really trust you. I want to be at your dinners, belong to your transactional network of optics. I'm so desperate to be near you. Now, imagine these terms leaving everyone's mouths in the same sentence as artist run space, artist led organization, or most cringe of them all. A-R-I. Ah, yes. If you have never heard anyone awkwardly spell these three letters before, it is an acronym for the equally uncomfortable term, artist-run initiative. This NAF language kicked off around 2015 to 2018, when the Tumblr discourse made its way to art criticism via the white cube fed by BuzzFeed articles. Of course, so-called Australia imitated this movement by platforming a group of people who were destined to shift and diversify the landscape across a wide range of activities and arts organizations. Imagine that. Well, I don't need to imagine because I was there when everyone was profiting from these terms at gallery openings, comment sections, and therapy sessions. So were you, I bet. Otherwise, this incredibly niche hang-up wouldn't be reaching you right now. From 2018 to 2023, I was the director of an artist-run space, which is an obfuscated way to say that I ran a gallery with my friends. The gallery put on shows. The shows were uncompromising at best of times. The artists were emerging. Emerging means they were new. We had a boss called the board, a committee made of industry professionals. This is an interchangeable model across the nation with minor variations that respond to local context, something that the art world hilariously calls the ecology. I was surprised to find out that people in the ecology had a standard of professional managerialism, even though everyone else thinks we are playing dollhouse. Gee, how embarrassing. Yes, hardworking people always ask me if I had a job when they heard I was a director of an ARI, prompting me to clarify that state government funded my position. Those on the left criticized or applauded these circumstances depending on their own financial situation at the time, which is fair enough. 
the right, well, they never seem curious. The next question was always if it is difficult to work with artists. And I always said, no, most artists are so great. But I strongly emphasize that art professionals are the problem because they're mostly insufferable. I'm talking long emails, HR language, and tons of stationery. <laughs> of course, the third question was the name of my gallery. West space, I will reply. They will inevitably frown and say, like the bank? No, more like a space in the West that is not in the West anymore, but still carries the same name. West Space. Yes, I was at West Space for five years, and it was an experience unique to West Space and only to West Space. Nothing compares to you. Rest in peace. If you didn't know, West Space is kind of like a big deal. It was founded by Brett Jones and Sarah Stubbs in 1993, so it's old. <laughs> Funny thing is that most spaces in Narm, Melbourne, want to be like West Space, or this idea of West Space, which seems to encourage a blunt state of homogenization. It's like sometimes I can't tell the difference from one gallery to the next. As most arts organizations mindly, mindlessly work toward this dead end of corporate speech and disturbingly sterile cubes, where art quickly becomes a means to an end. It's like watching American Psycho. But everyone is talking woke instead of probo. But once upon a time, the difference was more pronounced. And I can clearly recall how intimidated I felt when I walked into West Space for the first time in 2011, after they relocated from Footscray to Anthony Street and set shop in Burke Street. Back then, there was a very clear distinction between West Space. <laughs> you can just clearly see who is like, oh my god, get the fuck on the stage, and who is like, oh yeah, this is cool. <laughs> Um, <laughs> back then, there was a very clear distinction between West Space and other RIIs, such as Seventh Gallery, King's Eye, and Boss Projects. This was a vibe thing, first of all, as their galleries were huge and clean, like a corporate lobby for their office, which had no walls or separation, presumably to signal transparency but often made me wonder what they could possibly be doing there. And after five years of running a gallery, I still don't know. I think arts workers just don't like sitting close to each other, smelling, <laughs> smelling each other's humanity. A difficult reminder that they're more than just a label with currency. They had these things largely because of multi-year funding that allowed them to hire staff, commission new works, instigate international projects, and program exhibitions. You will be surprised now to hear that artists pay to show in a competitive process instead of getting paid, as it was the standard back then. I also heard recently, by chance, that every member of the board donated $10,000 of their own money to do the feed out in Burke Street, which shows the level of investment and faith in the space. Of course, City of Melbourne kicked them out later because life is cruel. Some names from Burke Street include Tamsin Hopkinson, Pip Murray, Kelly Fleetner, Leanne Gluscombe, and Thea Jones, half of, which have half of which I love, half of which I have never met especially love Thea Jones. Love you, Thea. Somewhere in there is the institutional peak of West Space. And whenever you see an ARI, 
trying to turn into a respectable white cube. That is the high they're chasing. They show other ARIs that they can become a new center of power instead of acting as decentralized agents that upset the pool of institutions. I call this the threshold of death. Because the moment an ARI reaches that spot, it must invest all of its efforts to sustain it, which means it loses purpose, depth, and relevance. It's like the organization gets a sick ego and infects everyone around it with it. Therefore, it eventually loses funding. Of course, this... Of course, this was... <laughs> Of course, this, that, what's with that word? Westbase influential pick was troubled with issues of exclusion as it was intimately tied with universities and was predominantly white. I haven't said that word in so long, white, but many friends and foes made a career out of calling it out but for better and for less better. Many of these people became extractive themselves which is a sad legacy to an era full of big proclamations. It is interesting to see how this crowd, who was meant to be rejecting the institution, is slowly becoming the institution themselves and adopting some of its worst traits, such as disposability. And if you say it out loud, they say, Diego, that's called horizontal violence. And I'm like, what does that mean? I spoke to Sarah Stubbs recently, who founded the space with her ex-partner, Brett Jones, and stayed for 20 years. I was surprised to hear that she was opposed to the institutionalization of West Space and that she asked Brett to kill it when she stepped down, which is kind of amazing. This strikes me as ironic, since it was them who invested their own phone, funds alongside fundraising um, that, say, for example, John Campbell has told me about with artist work, for a decade to reach a point where they could secure funding to hire staff. It was interesting to hear their grand service projects rather than overall administration, which carries a different connotation to organizational funding, where the focus becomes the operation itself. I found poetry in this idea that the people who manufacture this model, guided by ideals of an experimental space, did so in opposition to its inevitable destiny, institutionalization. It also kind of stings that 10 years of their own money, alongside the communities, allowed for this very thing they didn't want to happen. I guess you only find out what's on the other side once you're there and the destination may be a complete odds with the reasons why you undertook the journey in the first place. Which is a good sentence, but takes a while to... <laughs> when I asked Sarah to tell me about the first 20 years of West Space, we spoke for exactly 20 minutes and 51 seconds, which is entirely true. I have it on my phone. I found out that West Space was originally above a cafe and moved away from the location after their premises burned down. This fire took place during a show by Greg Pryor, but I wasn't able to find information on this show after our chat, so if anyone knows, please let me know. This, the brevity of this encounter made me realize that the history of West Space is now familiar to many spaces who have undergone similar process, a similar process of transformation, relocation, and institutionalization. It's almost like they're interchangeable. This old bracket of RIIs, 15 to 20 years to 30 years, no longer represents an alternative space, as they now operate as mi micro-institutions themselves without the resources of larger organizations. This means that they struggle to service the ecology by failing to offer a space for true experimentation, 
since they're tied to, to the responsibilities of multi-year funding, or to perform the role of bigger platforms with a wider reach, as they lack, lack the means. So it's an uncomfortable spot to be in. It is interesting to note that in this landscape, Westspace is now taking a step back towards a more playful orientation, which Joanna Kitty, Kitty, wow. Where's Joe? Um. <laughs> With Joanna Kito, Sebastian Henry Jones, Ronan Jafari, Benjamin Baker, and Leila Donio Baptiste hosting cake parades and shit. Perhaps West Space is leading another wave, which is a bit annoying if you, be, if you have been trying to turn into West Space, and now West Space is like, nah. That's not a vibe anymore. We're back to messy and grassroots. It makes me realize that the history of the gallery is here and now. For organizational memory is short, and rightly so. Sarah asked me what were my plans for Westspace in the future. And I said, oh, I'm no longer at Westspace. They just asked me to give this speech. But it forced but it forced me to think what I wish for West Space. And the answer is free rent in Collingwood Yards. So if you are listening, Collingwood Yards, you know what to do. Thank you very much. Thank you.